To everybody who's joining us, um, I'm delighted that you're able to be here. I'm really excited about this one. I'm Della Rucker. I am the principal of the Wise Economy Workshop and the communications manager for the American Independent Business Alliance, along with half a dozen other things. I am delighted today to be able to introduce you to someone you might not have met yet, but I kind of think you should know. Um, and we're going to talk through the story of how his work has evolved over the course of the last few years and show you a really impressive tool. Now, I've been dealing with tools for helping businesses figure out how to, to manage things, figure out how to change their, their strategy, figure out how to evolve into the new whatever it is. I've been doing that kind of stuff for a long time. I really love this tool that we're gonna end up being able to show you today that Jaime has developed because it is, um, it's, it's, a, it's a whole new approach on it. And it's an approach that, that really comes from a very deep and really pretty amazing um, experience that his family has had in their own journey of pivoting a, a small business, an independent business. So, Hi, May. It's, it's a, a delight. Um, I'm really glad we're getting to do this. Um, why don't you start by telling folks a little bit about um, your own background. Um, you're an architect by training. Um, you have established a consulting practice known as Storefront Mastery. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you, so why don't you tell us a little bit about about that work and how you got involved in that work. But then we're gonna take a step back and, and talk about the story of how your, your new platform, um, destroying your, your lockdown anxiety. anxiety. Thank you. I gotta find the right tab to pull that one up again. Um, but I, 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 wanna, I wanna give this, this, give your background before we launch into that. Great. Thanks. I'm super honored to be here. Very, very happy. Um, okay. The architecture story, that's my background. It starts, I, I went to the Savannah College of Art Design in, in Savannah, Georgia, which uh, was a fantastic platform for, you know, getting to know a lot of things. I, I majored in historic preservation and yeah. also in uh, architecture. So I went back home to uh, Ecuador after, uh, after Savannah five years living in living in Savannah. I established my architecture practice and then I recovered. So um, I say I'm a recovering architect right now. I, uh, yeah, I did some, uh, I did some uh, uh, redevelopment of historic properties and, and then I got to know the world of cities. I, I, I was never, I was never satisfied with just going into one building and making one building fantastic and nothing happens around it, which mm. is what happens too many times when we um, when we see historic preservation uh, projects that they just I mean they, they make a fantastic building and they, they they use the latest technologies and they they just make it fantastic and uh, around the corner there's problems that could have been easily fixed just by looking at how that building impacts the street so that got me into uh, economic development. And I started doing economic development with uh, with smaller cities back home in Ecuador, and small businesses were always popping up as the the vertical part of the enclosure of the of of, of, of streets and, and public spaces mm -hmm. that we were designing. And and these small businesses, you know, they they are what gives life to the streets. They are what make the streets interesting to walk in. They are what make the streets convenient for um, for neighborhoods for neighbors to to not make huge trips 
of miles to get a loaf of bread or 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 or, or a gallon of milk and mm -hmm. you can just walk and if that walk is great the neighborhood is going to be great and you're going to respond to the neighborhood accordingly if the city treats you right you will treat the city right so this is how i got into uh, economic development and small businesses and this is where it interacts with my intersects with my uh, with my family's business they have a a, a small bookstore an independent bookstore in uh, in in quito ecuador which uh, is called rayuela which means hopscotch you know the children's game and uh, so I got into the, the, the looking at small businesses part of, uh, of economic development, and I established my consulting doing that, doing that part of, 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 of EconDev. And then when I came to the, to the States about three years ago, I said, okay, this is, I, I was living in a fantastic area, probably one of the best pedestrian streets in the whole country, which is Lincoln wow. Road in Miami Beach. If uh, folks have not, been to Miami Beach and, and Lincoln Road, please do Google whatever Street View or something. And <laughs> it, it is it is really a fantastic uh, fantastic uh, place. It was designed in the 50s by a very well-known um, landscape architect. And it's a mall, of course. It's an outside mall. But um, I love it because this is where my kid learned to walk. This is where my kid could uh, take his strider bike and just, you know, go free without me worrying about cars hitting him. Um, so it, it, it is truly a fantastic place. I, so I was looking at those storefronts and I said, okay, this, these all, these storefronts all share something. I started finding patterns mm -hmm. and I, um, I wrote a book about, um, a book about design patterns of storefronts of how people who have a business and for whatever reason have not engaged a professional designer an architect to uh to design their storefront they can just take this book and see what is needed to have a great storefront not just the design elements but also the engagement and the interaction elements of um of the storefronts so you can imagine how much i learned about how storefronts work, how storefronts engage the sidewalks, and how the sidewalks become, you know, parts of the storefronts. That's fabulous. Before we go, before we get past this point, um, let's make sure. Let's say the name of the, of the book here. Um, the book is called "The Ten No BS Rules for Successful Storefront Design," and people can find it where people can find it. And on my uh, on my website storefrontmastery.com, or I have also a page for the book, which is uh, uh, successful storefronts that card that's c a r r d dot co that's c o not com but just co. okay okay yeah but it's in it's all in my in my storefrontmastery.com website okay, okay, so cool. you can imagine how much i learned about storefronts and how they engage the sidewalks and how they have to behave to activate their blocks neighborhoods and mm -hmm. ultimately cities so when COVID 19 happened everybody's work what was stopped on its tracks and, and, and everybody had to you know make a pause and say okay what am i doing now and I said, okay, wh how about applying all this knowledge about engaging the sidewalks and, and thinking about how small businesses can benefit from the extra sidewalk space that they will need mm. now? You know, because we were getting all the news of, of cities opening their, um, their sidewalks to, uh, to, to uh, the businesses that are there and opening the streets to let the people circulate as we do now on sidewalks. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, thought processes are a, a funny thing and they just start escalating and, and, and moving in directions that you really don't, don't think. And, and this is where, again, my, my uh, small independent bookstore story intersects with what I'm doing for, for business. So we've had a, a pretty interesting story, which, which we will get to later in which pivoting was an obligation. In, I'm sorry, what was an obligation? Pivoting. Oh, because, pivoting, yeah. Yeah, pivoting, because otherwise it was closing. 
And the bookstore. Yeah. So the bookstore whose English name is Hopscotch, but it's not a bookstore whose better. English it's name not is not its real name. And I will tell you also why the name Hopscotch. Okay, uh, cool. That will come later. That will come later. Uh, so that intersected with what, what I was doing. I said, okay, what if we produce a document that would help small businesses pivot during and after, especially after the lockdown is over? Mm -hmm. So I named it Hopscotch with the same name as the as the bookstore because I think it's all about a game. It's all about gaming the system. It's all about gaming the new conditions. Our customers are going to be very different when we open back up. They will have different income. There's, I think, 42 million new unemployed people in this country, very sadly. And their income is not going to be the same they had before which means their priorities are not going to be the same they had before. And also one thing that I believe is the one thing that we must build again, their trust in actually going to places, sitting next to other people is broken for many reasons. And uh, COVID is only one of them, unfortunately. So uh, we need to build trust back and so everything, you know, became a salad bowl or got mixed. I said, okay, let's, uh, let's make this playbook that will look at what I'm calling the, the three public realms of small businesses. Because you have your internal realms and everybody's helping you know with, uh, with the human resources and financial advice and legal advice. And this is how you comply with city codes and everything. That's the boring part of having a business. Everybody has to do it. Everybody has to do it. Everybody has to know how to pay taxes. Everybody has to know a little, at least a little bit of accounting so that you know you don't like, destroy your business in the process. So these are the boring things that you need to do. But engaging with clients is a fantastic thing. Decorating your store is a fantastic thing. Um, coming up with new offers and products and ideas and services for your customers, talking to your customers and engaging them and telling them, this is how you, how you use what I'm selling you. This is the best use of, of, of what I have for you. That's the fantastic part of having a business. That's why many people get into the business. If you bake delicious cakes, you get into the business of selling delicious cakes because people love your cakes. That's the fun part. And this is the and part you that enjoy happens. it. Yeah. Yes. And I think we're most preoccupied with fixing the internal realms right now. We are most occupied with uh, trying to get aid from the government, which is needed. We are occupied with uh, fixing our financial status, which is needed. We are preoccupied with uh, with fixing our uh, our human resources, um, getting more diverse workforces, getting uh, getting also help from the government to pay the the salaries of, of the workforce. So uh, let's go back and play the game of figuring out the fun parts, right? This is this was the premise, and uh, I'm working of course of course with uh, with business improvement districts. And one business improvement district uh, manager told me, "So what you're providing people is a rock to stand hmm. while they figure out what's next." And I said, hmm, "That's probably a very uh, much better description of my work than I could have done." So I adopted it. It's it's a, it's a rock, so people can stand, make a pause and figure out what's next. So looking at the public realms, what are these public realms? These public realms are, of course, what I call the foundation, which is your purpose, your mission, your the story your, you tell yourself and you tell your uh, uh, your customers, your tribe, because I, I will stop talking about customers right now and start talking about the tribe, because these are the people who like you, who advocate for you, who are the followers of what you do and, and amplify your voice everywhere. And these are the people who walk with you when you are doing great things and that will help you up when you're not doing so well. And so this is what a tribe does. And this is what I recommend. People don't have customers. I recommend people have tribes. And small businesses are in a very advantageous position to do this because a huge chain store it's hard for them to make a tribe. They just have customers who come in, get whatever they need and leave. The small businesses are built with so much care and passion and, 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 and time put onto them that what happens is they become, they become cult objects. And 
you know how we love the movies from the 80s because the they are fantastic and they played this song that everybody remembers john cusack you know with the with a with huge tape recorder playing peter gabriel's song that's a cult movie and small businesses have that thing that can make them also cult businesses and this is what we need right now because that's the scale of, 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 of how we are operating right now. We're not driving our cars. We're walking to the neighborhood store to get whatever we need. We're not driving 15 miles to Target, especially in towns like mine, where thankfully there's no huge footprints, so uh, um, huge footprint stores. So I, I need to drive like 15 miles to the next mm. Target or 20 miles to the nearest Walmart. So I don't. I shop local. And that experience of shopping, shopping local can be enhanced greatly if the small businesses realize that they have this fantastic asset, which is their storefront and the way they engage the sidewalk. So that's the foundation part. Then the delivery part, which is what you sell. If you are selling shoes, is there a service that you can add to those shoes so that they're not just shoes? They're the gateway to a lifestyle of running, of meeting like-minded people, of healthy eating or whatever, you know? And I say shoes because that's also, that, that's going to be a, a very important example that I give from the Nike superstore of all places of uh, Lincoln Road in Miami Beach. Oh, wow. How they, yes, how they just, they just became an experienced store much more than a shoe store. And, and of course, small businesses can emulate this. Of course, will not have the budget of Nike to install a basketball court inside the <laughs> store, but, uh, but they will be able to emulate the principles of what Nike did in, in, in Lincoln Road. I think every Nike store, Nike World, they're calling it right now, I think, or something. Um, pretty much every Nike store. Anyway, and so that's the delivery. Uh, how how your how you can add a service to your product, or if you're selling services, how can you add a product to your services? How can you come up with uh, maybe a guide for your customers to do things that I mean that you are helping them? But now, if you produce a guide and they have access to that, you cannot help 100 customers. You can help. 2,000 customers, 10,000 customers, because they can just download it from the web. Yep. And you're adding a product to your service. So you're diversifying, you're finding new uh, sources of revenue, which is going to be super important right now. We've seen what happens when you need to close your store, and that is your sole source of revenue. You are faced with the challenge of closing for good or pivoting, and it has taken people little and long time to pivot, but most have. And it has been more or less painful for different kinds of businesses. So if you if you have that as your sole source of income, things start getting complicated when something like a lockdown happens. And yeah. who's to tell us that a lockdown won't happen again? So if you have uh, if you have also an online store, if you have also a again the example from the bookstore, if you have a book club. Uh, if you have, uh, I don't know, uh, write creative writing classes. And, mm -hmm. uh, and these things I speak from experience because I know these things work for pivoting because of my business story. Um, so that's the delivery. And then the channels, because this is where we sell. Our sole channel, if we have a small business and a store, is just our store. If we have a store, physical store and online store, we have two channels. If we start selling by Twitter, mm -hmm. that's an extra channel. If we start selling by WhatsApp Messenger, which happens right now, it, yeah. it is a it is an enormous platform for uh, you know cultivating tribes and selling uh, mm -hmm. instant messaging tools. Yeah. So uh, looking at those, looking at how you are engaging these different platforms um, and how the channels that you are using will help your small business. So those, those are the three public realms, the three fun realms of, uh, of small businesses. And that's what's included in the playbook, in the Destroy Your Lockdown Anxiety playbook. The fun realms, I love the it. fun realms, that's what I should call them, the fun realms of, uh, of small business yeah. operation, yeah. yeah.
Well, and, and I, I love that idea of, and, and you're right, because very often, um, and, and to be, you know, to be really honest, I hadn't thought of that before at all. A lot of times in conventional small business and entrepreneurship development, we sort of assume that the business owner, to use your person making delicious cakes example, that they're getting into it because of the cakes, because they want to do the cakes, because they want to sell the cakes, because they want the, uh, you know, the relationship with people that they mm -hmm. build through the cakes. Um, well, I want cake. Are, huh? I want cake now. <laughs> Well, we won't be on. We won't be on this forever. <laughs> you, can, you know, go find your cake. <laughs> I have no cake whatsoever. So you know, which is a, which is a really good thing. When there's no cake in my household, it's it's way better than than when there is. But you know, different. You know, you can get away with it. Um, so so, but a lot of times, and you know, and I work with a ton of organizations that are focused on improving small businesses or helping small businesses or entrepreneurs or blah, blah, blah. And most of the time we focus on that, um, the, the boring stuff because we assume that, okay, well, they, they, they know the other thing or they wouldn't be going into business in this space. And what most of them, you know, kind of, kind of struggle with is, I don't know how to do my books. I don't know how to do my marketing. I don't know how to manage my inventory, blah, 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 blah. And so it's it's all, I think you call it internal, which I think is a really good way to put it. It's the back office stuff that Correct. you have to do right in order to get the 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 public realm um, to or work. To survive, yeah. Right. I mean, it's, 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 it's basic operations. But what you're describing is also crucial because that stuff can be really draining and debilitating yes. for people. I was responsible for finan for, for financial management for a company and it it drained me of everything. I mean it was it was an it was it, it did not enable me to be more creative. Um, it did not enable me to to um, bring to the table, you know, the the creativity, the passion, the insight, the blah blah blah. Um, and it's really easy to lose that, especially if you're, you know, a small business owner or an entrepreneur is often has to be kind of chief cook and bottle washer. You know what I mean? Um, where they have to do literally everything from making the food to washing the dishes, um, which might run afoul of health regs. But, you know, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> but what you're describing is a way for people to reengage with their passion. Correct. And their love, and their and the thing that they get the energy from to deal with all the rest of that stuff exactly is 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 absolutely crucial. And you know, I really do feel like we've we've missed that a lot in um, in 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 working with entrepreneurs, working with small businesses, you know, all of that kind of thing. So, you know, yay, fabulous. I mean, I think you really put your thumb on on something that um is is often missing and is often overlooked and in a period of massive and accelerated change mm -hmm. we have to be able to do so yeah, and, and 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 right now i mean many many people are really struggling with uh not being able to make the paychecks and not being able to make rent and not being able to just assure the longevity of their businesses and in that process in that process we lose what made us happy about the business and if if we lose that in and and i can speak in, in in from first knowledge of this if we lose this the whole business starts crumbling down very very slowly You're right. because we're not engaging our tribe with the same passion that we were before because while we're making a sale, a sale, we're saying, okay, these $24.99 I'm getting, $8 are going to the credit card and $6 are going to the rent and, and $4 are and gone. And, 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 and we don't get any, any rewards. We don't get any, when the reward is the actual operation of the business, because we're living, for many small businesses, the the store and the and the engagement and, and everything that happens in there is is a family's dream 
Yeah. For many, many small businesses, they start like like one person's dream, life dream of doing something, of changing something. Yeah. And, and so so that's that's what makes people happy about it. And uh, yeah, so right now, I think the weight of of aid packages and and the uncertainty, so especially the uncertainty of, of what's yeah. going to happen next. Yeah. When, I, when I take walks around town here, I live in Montclair, New Jersey which is a beautiful town. I, I take walks and each day there's a new store that's hmm. boarded up and, 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 and closing. And that, that we haven't even been back for them to realize business is not the same as before and then close. So yeah. I yeah. think the, the closures that, are, that we're seeing right now around towns everywhere, and it, it's, it's gonna be just the first, the first wave of, of, of closures and anything we can do to prevent that. Yeah. Anything we can do to prevent that is, is I think, a good thing. Focusing yeah. on the fun parts is probably a good part of it. Yeah, well, and, and focusing on the good parts, on the fun parts, in yeah. a way fun. that gives people the ability to see new possibilities for the things that they love. So maybe their love has always been for the um, the face-to-face -face interaction with the um, with the customers and that can't happen right now or there's less of it right now or Correct. something gets bluey in the future and that goes away again. Um, so how else can you can you feed that love? Can you feed that drive? Um, I know one there's a there's a business owner who happens to be in Northville, Michigan, which is which is a pretty um, pretty comfortable um, suburb of uh, Detroit. Mm -hmm. the 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 business is um, kind of mid range um, women's. She started with shoes. She does a lot of accessories and clothing and stuff like that. So my mother in law took me there one day, and I've just been in love with the place since. the The thing that has really amazed me over the course of this, and this was a woman who, you know, my suspicion is that if there was nobody in the store, she was talking to the bricks. I mean, you know, that was just, you could tell that was just the piece of this that she loved so much. And Michigan shut down pretty aggressively. Yes. When the pandemic started. Um, and she figured out, you know, she really leaned into using social media, using Instagram, using, um, you know, doing Facebook um uh, shoe shows, basically. She called them something else. I'm screwing up the name of that. Uh, but she she really leaned into using that technology, not just to sell stuff, which she's actually done a really good job, from what I can tell, of selling stuff um, through these 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 avenues. Yes. But of also maintaining the relationship with her customers. Yes. And. You, you can tell by the amount of energy that she puts into it, just how much, you know, this this really matters to her. And it matters to the customers too, which which, yes. which is what motivates them to go to Facebook and, and see a shoe, a shoe show. Um, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a very good, yeah, it was. yeah. No, no, but I mean, really, I mean, it's, it's it, it, if you are able to motivate people into coming to, a specific time of day and leaving whatever else you're doing. Maybe some people are not doing much, but some people are working still from home and stopping whatever activities you're doing and going to Facebook and, and, and seeing this woman pour her passion into her, her store, even though there's no one there and, and she's speaking to a telephone basically or, or an iPad or whatever. Um, it's, it's, it's just, this is how you cultivate a tribe. This is how you build a tribe. And you can be sure that the second she opens, that store is going to be flooded with people just wanting to see her. Yeah. She's built a personal brand. And this is, this is a, a huge recommendation I can, I can, I can make. If I, can, if I make one recommendation for small business owners during this, um, uh, this webinar is build a personal brand. Become your whatever business is. Become your business's first ambassador and just go yeah. all out and, and and become the face of your business and become your business and 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 just build a strong personal brand of, of people who yeah. love 
what they're doing. And that shows. You used the term before, which I was really excited by the first time I saw it in the the earlier draft of, of your materials of a tribe. Mm -hmm. And I have a, a wonderful friend who was one of the first interviews in this series uh, named Christina Aldan. And Christina works with um, uh, predominantly tech companies mm -hmm. around social intelligence and um, just just kind of the human side of building a business and building the the human relationships within a business and she is the one who taught me the term tribe and your description a few minutes ago of a tribe in in the business context I think was absolutely crucial. I want to. I want to spend another minute on that. Mm -hmm. um, we think in about when we think about businesses conventionally, and a lot of times I'll say that this is like a almost an industrial era kind of leftover, where we think of things very transactionally, mm -hmm. and we think of things as being these separate little widgets that you, like you take this widget and you plug it into the thing, and you take that widget and you plug it into the thing, and somehow you're gonna put all these little pieces together and the machine runs. Um, and in reality, the interconnections are, are much more complicated than that. So, so people who are used to thinking about business transactionally might go, wait, tribe uh, a, a tribe people who um are advocates for advocates. your business that, that's, ambassadors, that's, that's, activists ambassadors. Your, yes so so let's let's just unpack a little bit i think the example of the store in northville that we just talked about where um she's using the platforms that are available the the connection opportunities that are available to build that that loyalty we started to get there but i wanted to make sure we pulled that concept of tribe back into it so um tell me about what you see with regard to um how businesses build their tribe and what that tribe tribe looks like and what it does on behalf of the 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 business and on behalf of yes. everybody else who's who's into that business yeah, what i what i've seen is you build a tribe by doing things that are not directly related to selling. So stop selling for a second and start making people dream about what you do. What is, what is, what is the big thing that you're selling? If you're selling shoes, you are selling uh, health. If you are selling, I don't know, Jaguars or Bentleys, you are selling some kind of lifestyle. And if you look at the at the really high end brands, this is how they sell. The 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 people who own a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar Bentley, when they are on the street and they meet another Bentley owner, right? What they do is they lower the window and they ask for the gray coupon. <laughs> that, and, and 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 that that is a tribe. Does that mean they have to carry like 15 cans of Grey Poupon around with them? Or If you own a Bentley, you probably do. <laughs> or not. I don't know. <laughs> when I own a Bentley, I will. You let me know. You let me know. I, okay. will, I will carry not 15, but 20, just in case when I own a Bentley. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. That was just too funny. No, that was, no, that was, I started it. Sorry. Um, so this is what happens. They are selling the tribe. And if you look at the marketing of the high-end brands, what they do is that. If you, if you purchased a Louis Vuitton bag, you are in the very exclusive club of Louis Vuitton bag owners, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, if we apply that knowledge to what we do with small, local, independent-owned businesses, mm -hmm. uh, what, they, what they do is they start building a club of people who enjoy the special parts of what they are selling. The, if they're selling shoes, they're, you know, the club that will uh, participate in the weekly uh, 5K runs around town, for example. Yeah. And that is a club that includes the 
physicians who are offering their medical services to the runners. It includes the people who are selling the sports uh, apparel. It includes the shoe sellers, of course. It includes the people who are selling the little watches that are you know, monitoring your health, whatever. It includes the people who are selling the healthy smoothies and the people who are selling the, 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 the healthy salads for you know, the health cafes or whatever. So it includes a whole ecosystem of people, which if you start one of these, all those people who come to this ecosystem will be your tribe. So do things that are not selling. Do things that what they do is connect people, share knowledge with people, uh, bring people into, um, into the exclusive club of people who know about Mm -hmm. sports and running and health and and all the things that are around your business so i guess a big piece of advice is uh stop selling and start start engaging people start connecting people with the things that they need to know in order to be part of your club does well, that make sense totally and one really incredible piece that you added on to that um in in with the example you gave is you know, we is is that the tribe is not just one business and it's um, advocates, it's acolytes, right. people who love it, whatever. It is, it is again, it is an ecosystem. It Maybe is an ecosystem within a larger ecosystem. Um, and, and but what that also implies is that if I am the person who has that, she's an accessory shop. And I'm not meaning to disparage her because, you know, I think she's doing the level best she can and this stuff might be going on. I don't live there. So um, I don't catch everything. But it's not just a matter of her relationship with her customers. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of her relationship with compatible businesses um, that, that sort of are serving the same market the same um the Correct. same population and building that ecosystem so that so that they're relating with each other in multiple ways so it's more of a circle than a fan diagram correct, correct. right it's more of a, a 360 degree thing that yes. you know it's everywhere um and also with, the, also with the community start. also with the community which is which is very very important for example if you are teaching guitar lessons and you need to hang your this is my phone number for guitar lessons sign somewhere mm -hmm. where do you go do you go to the store where no one walks inside or do you go to the store that everybody visits at least once a day mm -hmm. you go to that store and this is where you hang your guitar lesson sign and chances are when you bring your paper in they will say look for a spot and you'll be um, you'll have a hard time finding a spot because everybody's choosing the same bulletin board to hang their signs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these places are becoming hubs for community. And during these hard times, when we are locked down and slowly starting to, you know, reemerge into uh, into community life, these places are going to be more than because the, the, the whole narrative is let's help our small businesses. And what, yeah. what the small businesses are doing is they're actually being the backbones of the company. They are supporting us. They are, they are being, you know, the warp and woof of the community because this is where everybody meets. People don't meet in there. And that's a fantastic image, the warp and woof. I love that. I love, I love now that. We, we do need to make sure that people understand that warp and When you're knitting, when you're, when you're making a textile, there's, yeah. the, there's two, two ways, two uh, directions of threads. The warp and the woof, and and when you combine these, you have a textile, you have a a, 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 a tissue, you have a, a, a cloth, yeah. and 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 when we look at the community as that, the small businesses are the warp and the woof of the of the community. Okay. So that's a fantastic image that I have to I have, I have to thank I have to thank my friend uh, Ben Brazel from Indiana for introducing that term. Um, oh. He and I introduced his name because. What he does is he has a, a monthly gathering of people who, any person from the community who has a story to tell, whatever story it is, 
they open a place in uh in in his uh, in his town in indiana richmond indiana and they pe people go and just tell their story and these people are being the warp and wolf of the community and i've been using that term forever since since i found out so these places are are, are, are becoming hubs of community and yeah. that's right now it's a super important thing to 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 cultivate tribes because they are this is where we meet we're not meeting anywhere else we're meeting in the neighborhood uh bakery we're meeting in the neighborhood uh uh whatever a grocery store or, or even the, the the wine store these are very very limited number of places that that right now are allowed to be open and this is where we're meeting this, this these are the places that are keeping the pilot light of community on the pilot light of community you you've got incredible your 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 use of of metaphor is just it, it just kicks ass um <laughs> Thanks. So I yeah that was that was highly um eloquent on my own part as well but um I I, I do I do that it, it's my second language but I do that too you're you're well yeah I, 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 I'm behaving it, I this is this is a complete aside but I was reading something else earlier today and and uh on you know Instagram or something and I went I have such appreciation for a well placed cuss word oh yeah Oh, yeah. it, you know, I, I, I'm not, you know, you don't have to make it every third word, but in the, in the right context, that's just like everything. So, you know, little, little, little sidebar there. Um, I want to show folks the, um, the, the, the guidebook, but I do want to take just a second since we promised it and, and just tell a tiny, just, if you can tell us sort of a short version of, um, the hopscotch that's the english name it has a spanish name because it is in cusco ecuador the the family business and i promised i wouldn't try to pronounce anything in spanish because i butcher it so you know i was doing good to get jaime out straight um and that's perfect well why don't you why don't you tell us just just a little bit just to give an, an illustration of some of the things we've been talking about of of how that impacted um, or how this this process played out with regard to the bookstore in Cusco. Okay. And it's in, in Quito, Ecuador. Sorry. Quito. I'm so sorry. Yeah, sorry to correct you. Um, uh, yes. So I guess the most important thing that the people need to know is that Ecuador doesn't have a national currency. Ecuador, yes, Ecuador uses the American dollar as the national currency because the economy was tanked so bad that we actually had to ditch our national currency and adopt the U.S. dollar. When which, was that? Which, no. This was 2000. Okay, okay. Year, year 2000. It's been 20 years. Okay. Um, and it has been, it has been a godsend for businesses in Ecuador, because okay. otherwise you'd be getting in local currency the equivalent of $100 the first of the month, and those $100 by the end of the month would have been if you exchanged, would have been about 80, 70. When it got the worst, it was probably 10 or 15. So, the so currency can you imagine right now, can you imagine right now mm -hmm. being paid, I don't know, $100 salary a month? And hopefully nobody's paid $100 a month for salary, but um, getting $100 a month and then going to the grocery store, which is which you have a budget of, 20 and going to the pharmacy which you have a budget of 10 and going to the i don't know to the hardware store which you have a budget of 10 again so you're spending all this money in things you have budgeted but when you go to the grocery store it's not 20 it's 50. when you go to the pharmacy it's not 10 it's 25 and you when you go to the hardware store it's not 10 it's 50 also so yeah. you're you you end up the end of the month with those hundred dollars not being enough to purchase what you need Understood. And, okay. and it happens in this country i mean yeah. it happens a very very tiny percentage that that money is devalued each year so prices go up a few cents and sometimes right. you notice sometimes you don't but when some things cost i don't know 100 today and 175 tomorrow you tend to notice Especially yep. when when the sum of everything means you're not making the end of the month. So 
our inflation went up to like 25,000% or something like crazy figure that we can, can't even begin to fathom in this country. And, and, and so the government was, was obligated to change to American dollars. In the process, they wiped out the entire country's savings. So if you had $1 in a savings account, it was gone. If you had $1 million, it was gone. So uh, yes, so you can imagine the amount of people who were, went broke, businesses who had to close, the, the waves of, of, of immigration that we had, strangely, not, not to the United States, but to Spain, uh, huge you know, families were broken because people went to Spain to work and left their little kids with the, with the grandparents. And that, that right now it's becoming a huge social problem because those, kid, those kids were two 20 years ago. And right now they are, you know, we are experiencing the consequences of, of, of those incredible changes that, that, that became from the economy. And we were caught in that. We were caught in that, mm. and, 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 and then 2008, which didn't only rock the United States, but the whole world. And so it, it, it's been a story full of interesting things that we've needed to do, and, and, and we have. And uh, we, we, we meaning the bookstore. We mean the bookstore. Uh, and so we had, we had to navigate. We had to navigate. We had to be creative, and we had to find skills that we had hidden from... I don't know. My aunt's the one who runs the books, the bookseller, the, the master bookseller. She's a lawyer by training, so she had to, you know, brush up, and 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 and, and just everybody found their skills, and everybody had to had to you know brush up and their knowledge and everything, and sit down on the table and say, okay, what are we going to do? And we came up with interesting lessons that I'm applying right now for the playbook, and sure. all this to tell you that that when catastrophe hits and it has in the past, it probably will in the future. The, the main thing that you need as a small business is the creativity to rethink yourself, the creativity to rethink what you sell, to rethink how you're selling, to rethink where you're selling and to, and, and, and to be able to ditch probably the whole entire idea with which you started Mm -hmm. and adopt a completely new set of skills and a completely new type of operation for your business and sell something completely new, but provide for the same people, solve the same problems and mm -hmm. keep going. And that's the thing. So you're solving the same problems and you're catering to the same people. You're just changing how you're doing that. Mm -hmm. So, so you're really kind of retapping into the reasons why you were doing it in the first place. Yes, which is what the 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 guide is about guiding you through doing, and figuring out how to apply those passions, those skills, that capability in a new way. Which to me was real, part of what was so fascinating to me about about this was. I, I know, and, I, and I've written a good deal about this in the past, just how difficult it is. People get, get stuck in their paradigm. They yeah. get stuck in their expectation. I do this, and yeah. this is the way I do this thing. And I see the world through this lens, and this is the toolkit that I have to work with. Correct. Uh, and... For people to take that apart, for people to, to even if you know that you're within that, mm -hmm. and, and I've written about this a lot, the ability to step out of that and to find ways that aren't within that existing box, that is a super, super, super difficult thing for our brains to do because we're so, you know, we there's, there's plenty of cognitive science that says we're you know, once we get a pattern, our brains want to hold on to that pattern for all it's worth. Yes. And what you're doing is asking people to break some very fundamentals on the, of that pattern. Maybe the assumption that, um, I, I can't even come up with a good example right now, but maybe even the assumption that the thing that I'm selling is a physical book 
because part of the story of the, the bookstore is that you, you know, you, you, well, you still sell books, but you, you added a wide variety added a of, wide variety of, yes. Yeah, so, so we've I, I added a wide variety of, 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 uh, of, of income of revenue uh, streams. And never, I, th I think you, you mentioned the, the cognitive science that, you know, the pattern thing. I like not, I do this all. Yeah. It's I'm, like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not asking people to, uh, so Mr. Small Business Owner, please break your paradigm. What I'm doing is I am, I am, I am using, I'm, a, I'm an avid reader of, of psychology, Carl Jung especially. And mm -hmm. so what I'm doing is I, 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 I'm asking people uncomfortable things. Mm -hmm. I'm asking people things that will trigger some thought patterns that will allow people to basically see the answers that they provide to the questions because the playbook has three exercises. The first one is wh where you assess where you are right now. These are just mm -hmm. basic questions that you make, you qualify one to five. But Would you like me to show it? Um, sure, if you want. So okay. the, the, the first part is just, you know, a value assessment of where you are right now. The second one is the game plan, which is, this is where I ask the, the uncomfortable questions that, will trigger thought patterns or will, will will trigger ideas that will challenge what you're doing right now. And the answers that the small business owners give to these questions, when they read them, those are the answers that they need to break the patterns. So I'm not asking people to break the patterns. I'm asking people to answer questions and they themselves will break the patterns alone later. I love so, that. Yeah. So yeah. So this is what we did. This is what we did. And, and, and right now I can tell you, it was a bookstore which uh, called the providers and got the books, put them mm -hmm. on shelves, opened the doors. People came in, got the book, paid, left. Right now we are a bookstore. We are a publishing house. We are actually, we are two publishing houses. One that publishes, one that publishes with a line of, of you know, psycholo psychology books, philosophy books, political science books, social sciences, and one that publishes uh, whatever, nonfiction and, and, and uh, or rather fiction and little poetry books that anybody wants to publish and, and whatever doesn't conform to this, to the very rigid social science academic kind of work that we do. So we have two publishing houses. Wow. We have, we have uh, uh, courses, we have creative writing, courses and and a few others that I'm, I'm forgetting right now but but it's basically the the master bookseller who's also a writer is mm. is, is is teaching people how to connect with their inner self to write a biography it's super super focused oh wow and people are loving it people, huh. people are loving it and they are the, the, the sheep she was doing it she was doing it uh in in in, in person before uh, covid and now she's doing online and of course it has boomed because anybody can get the in the webinar uh in the course before she could do it with probably eight or ten people around the table and right now she can do it with a thousand people at the same time so it's uh yeah so it's, it's it's fantastic um we're doing that uh they also opened the 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 space not because I designed the space, but it was really the most beautiful bookstore in the whole in the whole city, and they opened up that space for uh, for 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 events. And even right now, we're we're talking to craft publishers who who make these fantastic little books out of like art books, mm -hmm. and uh, people who are uh, doing like literary entrepreneurships and becoming sort of a co-working space where all these people of different of different uh so it, ecosystem again so yeah, all, the, yeah. all, these, all these people that are doing things related to book to books yeah people, yeah, yeah. Show books, people who make books people who write books people who edit books people who make books beautiful everybody's getting together in this kind of uh co-working space for uh, for uh, for literary co-working space so adding many sources of revenue what it does is it distributes the system of operation of the bookstore so if something fails if we need to close we still have it's one of five sources of revenue which it will impact us of course 
but there will still be four others that are yeah. sustaining the business and the business doesn't need to close down. Yeah, you 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 you've diversified and created a a tribe at the same it time. Takes a long time because you need to be on top of your social media, you need to be on top of your of your email list. Start an email list now. That's another very very important piece of advice. Start it now and start emailing your people. Hi, I woke up today. I had a coffee. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye. That's it. Just <laughs> keeping your 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 personal brand alive in people's yeah. heads. And, and 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 when you are known for something and you just write to say hi, people are gonna instantly say, you know, and 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 instantly make the connection of of, of your your email saying hello with whatever you do, and it's gonna stay, you know, top of mind. And that's that's yeah. very very important. Before we wrap up, I do want to make sure that we show, just give people a flavor of what's in the survival guide. And I want to talk a little bit about what the options are for people to, to engage with, benefit from, um, work with you to, to, to get to this point. So let's show it first. Okay. Do you, want me, I, to, do you want me to share the, the screen and show it? You can share it or I can share it. I, I, okay. I don't care which. I didn't share it before because you were, you were, you were going someplace beautiful, and I was like, I'm not, I'm not taking away from this right now. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll share, and I'll, I'll start, you know, I'll start right now. You're going to see a very weird echo of signal, but <laughs> now yep. you can see the playbook, right? Yes. So why don't you expand it um, full screen if you can? Okay. So this is. This is how it looks like. Awesome. And the you you mentioned the metaphors before. The mm -hmm. army knife is a fantastic metaphor because this is what it's a it's a fantastic toolbox that helps us do many many things, and it's very convenient to just take with you. And it's your sidekick. You know how superheroes have sidekicks. <laughs> this this is your sidekick. This is your sidekick that will walk with you as you find the problems that are coming and, and fight the challenges and, and overcome the challenges. So this is going to be your sidekick. Um, this is the guide. So uh, it starts with a letter from me. And this is what you can use it for, right? This is, let me see if I can, if I can, ah, here, there. There we go. Thank you. There, yes. So this is what you can use it for. You know, regroup, gather up skills and strengths, give the corona lockdown a heck of a fight, uh, find inspiration, find a rock to stand on, and this is this is basically what it what it does. It it takes care of the fun parts, like I said before. It takes care of the fun parts of uh of your business, the 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 public realms of your of your small business. And everything was fine. Then Corona came. This is these are just basic things that that people can do from my from my 100 reopening ideas. The questions is very important. The questions you should be asking yourself now. What if you're sitting right now and, and looking at your business and, and saying, OK, what's going to happen next? Uh, asking yourself what's going to happen next is probably not going to get an answer. But there are questions that if you ask yourself, they will provide an answer, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what skills do you need to destroy the lockdown anxiety? And this is just an explanation of the of the book, mm -hmm. how it works. Have you seen this? If you look at this, if you look at this, you probably think of that little game with the with the balls hanging by threads. You get one ball, you, you stretch the ball, stretch yeah. the, 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 you know, and everything moves. Yeah, yeah. So here's your story. Here's the problem. Here's the problem you're solving. Here are the values that you have for your business. Here's your purpose. This is your tribe, and this is your business model. If you start moving all these, what's going to happen is is things are things will move, and we want things to move. So self, the journey begins with your self assessment, and these are the questions that I was that I was talking to uh, to you before. So yeah. these questions are, for example, um, you have to say from one, which is highly unlikely, to five, which is very true. Things like uh, your brand's values are evident in every contact with your business, or um, 
you have a clear idea of the values of your organization. So if you yeah. answer these things about the foundation, the delivery, and the channels. And then you go to the game plan where, where the uh, more, more uncomfortable questions are. And these questions are, for example, have you had to move in the last five years and what happened? Mm -hmm. Or what is the most important thing your, your community and your neighborhood is learning from your being there? Or what are you learning from your community from, from serving them? And these things, people don't ask themselves these things in, 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 I mean, some surely have, but from my experience, these are questions that we do not ask ourselves when we are uh, evaluating our businesses. No, oh, excellent. Uh, and things about, you know, products, uh, how can you synthesize your mission, offer, and products to create an experience 10 years from now? Can you mm -hmm. describe how your business is 10 years from now in, in present sense? Uh, present tense, sorry. Uh, and then, of course, the, the report, which, you know, gives you ideas of what to do now. And then this little thing, which is the hopscotch. Uh -huh. Hopscotch is this children's game. And uh, I, I, I was saving this for, for, for last. There is a, a fantastic novel by an Argentinian writer called uh, Julio Cortázar. And what this novel does is you can just read it and it's going to be a, a fantastic short story about two lovers in Paris. And, or you can read it by jumping back and forth in, in, in different chapters and, and finding a new story and creating a new story as you are reading. And the story mm. gets more complex and the story gets more intricate and gets more personal and gets more and it, it's just a fantastic book that you can read as many times as you as, as you want and it'll wow. be you'll find different stories each time you do and it's all it's all a game and okay. our bookstore was named after the, that book and, okay. and and this is the central part of the destroyer lockdown inside the playbook which is where you get to play where you get to get the answers grab the answers that you gave to the questions of the game plan and establish your story what is your business story how how did you find the passion to 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 create your business? What problems are you solving for your community? What are the values you are using to solve these problems? What is what is the purpose? What is your mission? What is the the, the, the end game of your opening your business? What is your tribe and how you connect to them? And what is your business model, which is what you are selling and where you are selling? So when you do this, you fill these here, and then you'll have a nice view of your business model which I, will let you sit down pause and you know get some perspective i absolutely love how you took you know people who've done entrepreneurship stuff for a long time have it would you mind going back to the hopscotch just oh, one I, second wait, wait, so i stopped sharing i think ah, yeah nope just i will share little, again. i will share again. little thing again um yeah. but what i absolutely love about that is that you know, a lot of people who've worked with advising small businesses or entrepreneurs or whatever, you know, we have this business model canvas that's open source. So everybody uses that. Um, but it people it, it's it's easier to use than a conventional, you know, 15 page business model with blah, 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 blah. You know, it's kind of but but it's also not always. Um, it, it's more, um, people can use it wrong very easily. Yes. And, um, and, and it, sometimes it just doesn't seem to fit too awful well. What you've done here with really tracking through the strategy from the story to the, to the, the passion, to the, I'm sorry, wrong word. Start from the story to the problem, to the values and the purpose and the tribe and the model is, is you, you've, you've made it a logical progression just like when you play hopscotch you start at one square and then you go to another square and then you know you may you may hop and change your pattern of exactly. how you're going about it but you can see where where you're going so i just i just wanted to give that a little extra props because i think that just that just kicks butt. I love that. And I think, I, I think, I think there's, there's many canvases around. There's lots of canvases. There's yeah, the, happy, there are. the happy startup canvas and the, the lean canvas and the yeah. business model canvas. I think, I think the, they all deal with, with, with different things. And, and this one's dealing with the fun parts. 
this one's dealing with the with the fun parts, and I think that's that's probably the the, the strongest suit of this uh, yeah. of this canvas. That that it will it will show you where your passion is mm -hmm. and how you can direct it. I love it. I love it. So go ahead and show you were you were starting to show kind of the 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 final pieces here. Yeah, I think that's um, what's next, right? So. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, look at the design of your storefront. If you have a storefront, if you're a, a business with a storefront, right now there's so many opportunities to to build that into into the center of your business because that's probably for a long time it's going to be where you interact with your customers, with your tribe. Mm. So looking at how your storefront engages the sidewalk where you where you're operating is uh, is is a huge thing that will will uh, save you from many uh, headaches later. Then create a sales strategy, which is, uh, I, I, I speak about the value funnel a lot. And this is basically how you guide traffic to your store, to your mm -hmm. channels, to your different channels, um, by engaging people, by sharing knowledge with people. And these are all questions that are on the, on the value assessment and also on the game plan. How, how, to, uh, how to share knowledge, how to teach people, how to become this guru of the neighborhood that uh, that will not only sell shoes, but will you know give you a life experience while you are purchasing those shoes. And then ask questions and communicate with your tribe. Things, the thing is that the, 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 the tribe will change. The people who are in your tribe probably won't change, but their conditions are going to change. The mm -hmm. lessons, there, there's going to be lots of lessons learned during the 80 something days of, of, of lockdown. And there's going to be different people will emerge or people will emerge a different person from the lockdown. So the thing that we can do right now is ask, ask questions. So I was selling you pizza before. How will that change now? How can I make the pizza suit you now? And cool. that's it. Okay. Of course. So, so how how, the, how this works is I have it in my um, in my Gumroad store, so okay. people can just go there and and get and 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 do it do it themselves. Just I think it's like fifty seven dollars. Just buy this thing. It comes with my design, the ten no BS rules for a successful storefront design okay. book, and also with the with the display book. So they can do it themselves. Everything is oh, there. Is so they can do it themselves. So this is a bundle. Um, Gumroad is a platform for selling um, largely digital merchandise. Mm -hmm. um, so, so is that at Storefront Mastery? Is that gumroad.com? I think it's forward slash Storefront Mastery. Gum.co. Yeah, or I think maybe maybe it's gumroad.com. I don't know. Maybe okay. Keep, Storefront, keep Mastery. Storefront Mastery is my, uh, is my username at Gumroad. Um, mm -hmm. So yes, gumroad.com slash storefront mastery. And you can find me there. You can find all the products that I have there. And so if you purchase that, it's gonna be the playbook and the design book, which the playbook, you can just do it yourself. You can do everything yourself and you can arrive to the canvas with everything you need. Everything is explained in there. It's a do it yourself business retooling kit, business survival kit maybe. Yeah. Uh, but you can book a play date in which we get together for 45 minutes um, after you've, of course, you've you know, filled everything, the questions and everything. We get together, we speak a little bit about it, and mm -hmm. you give me all the information, and I, I craft a tailored report for you with recommendations pertaining your specific business because right now if you look if you look at the report part of the of the playbook it's going to have generic recommendations kind of mm -hmm. generic it, it, they will apply but they are mm -hmm. essentially generic recommendations depending on 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 how you do your um, how you answer your questions and the and the, the scores that you get in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the mm -hmm. questions that you answer but if you if you book a play date it's going to be you answering this. Yes, that's it. That's mm -hmm. it. If you book a play date, that's going to be um, that's going to be us together talking about these things. You send me the um, there the one on the right is mm -hmm. that's not, that's the play date. Yep. That that's just the play date. So okay. yeah, the fifty-seven one is the um, 
so if you if you book the play date of course it's not going to be 199 it's going to be 199 less the 57 that you already paid oh, okay mm-hmm. yeah so um yeah that's the one mm-hmm. so if we get you you book the play date and what i do is i i craft uh i craft a report that's tailored to your business wonderful wonderful the the whole platform and we'll have when we post this we'll have links to um to all of these resources um there'll, there'll be a post at wiseconomy.com when the video and the audio go live so you'll want to check those to you know if you have any questions about what these links are but uh, they're they're extraordinary resources they're really really well done and mm-hmm. you know the one thing you know i would I would just praise you for is you designed them in such a wonderfully accessible way. So you might not be using all that architecture stuff that you learned, but, but somewhere in that process, you found some really serious chops for designing these kind of resources in a manner that are just so much more accessible and so much more useful than a lot of the stuff we're, we're, we're used to dealing with. So it's just, it's just impressive. Um, So, if people want to get a hold of you, and again, we'll have this this link, but just you know, for anybody who who um, who wants to, how can they they get a hold of you? So your email is hello at storefrontmastery.com. Correct. That's my email. Okay. There's a, um, a Facebook page, Storefront Mastery. There's an Instagram page, Storefront Mas- Instagram account, Storefront Mastery. Okay. Um, there's a Twitter account which is DIY storefronts. Okay. Like good yourself storefronts, DIY storefronts. And I'm on LinkedIn also. You're quite active on LinkedIn. So I, yeah, I think I was more active before on LinkedIn and also on, on, on Instagram because I mean, I was going out more and taking more pictures, but I try to stay on top of it. I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm on Twitter a lot now lately. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it does seem like, you know, we, we, we changed. I'm trying to find it right now. I shouldn't do that well. Don't play with your phone, Della. Um, but, um, you know, the, you know, different, I, different, different social media platforms, you know, good for different stuff, different folks, yeah. different people. Correct. But I, I'm, I'm guessing, I haven't looked at your Instagram yet, but I'm guessing that it's just like gorgeous especially with all your Miami beach stuff. I'm like, Oh my God, I gotta go back and look through all that. That's uh, that is an amazing place. Yeah. Miami, Miami beach is just fantastic. Yeah. But I, I mean, small towns in the Northeast, they have, I've, I've, I've still to venture all the way to Maine and Vermont, which is on the bucket list, but the small towns in, in New England are fantastic. And the small, small towns in this kind of mid Atlantic sort of, yeah new jersey pennsylvania yeah fantastic towns beautiful yeah. main streets downtowns very quaint shops it, it's it's fantastic what people do yeah well we're gonna have to get you you know the the eastern seaboard is a wonderful and lovely place and you know you've had the opportunity to be in some really gorgeous cities between savannah and and miami beach and and you know the towns the towns in the mm-hmm. um mid-atlantic uh, we'll have to get you. We'll have to get you to the Midwest sometime. So we we work a little different, but you know. well, my 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 sister lives in 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 Northern Illinois. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's interesting. You mentioned Ben in Richmond, in Indiana. That's yeah. um, that's actually sort of halfway between. It's a little bit off the beaten path, but but kind of between Cincinnati and Columbus and Indianapolis. So that's about as Midwest as you can come. Yeah. So um, that's that's completely awesome. Any any final things you want to tell folks? Any anything else you want them to be aware of? Uh, I guess the big thing is never stop asking questions. Just yeah, never stop asking questions. The, the, what we have right now are, are 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 questions. We rarely have answers. Things will change week to week, and 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 there will be new things to figure out. Uh, if we keep asking questions, we'll keep finding the right answers for that moment. Maybe tomorrow questions will change. So ask again. 
and most most of us most of us in the industry will be super happy to answer them that's fabulous yeah we could have a whole nother conversation about building ecosystem within the industry of people who are trying to help small businesses and uh community revitalization yes i think we're gonna have to leave that one for another day because that could be another three hours but i think that'd be pretty damn fascinating yeah it would be great Jaime, mean, this has been fantastic. I, I it knew has. it would be fascinating. I knew it would be cool. And, you know, it's been all of that and more. So I am I'm very just, happy. Good, good. I'm hugely grateful for you taking the time, going over the hour mark. Um, it was just such good stuff. I didn't want to cut it off. So we're a little longer than usual, but mm, that's okay. That's okay. Thank so, you so much. I've, I've been super happy. and, and Awesome. And Hopefully, hopefully uh, I can help in any way. Absolutely. One more question, though. We heard your little guy in the background. He's he's four. He's four. And what's his name again? His name is Maximiliano. Maximiliano. But, but locally, he's known as Max. Well, yeah, that's a lot of syllables to have a yeah, four-year-old try it's to his say. Long name, his long name. <laughs> that's fine. That's cool. But uh, no, he's he's. I had a little bit of a chance to meet him when we talked before. Oh, and that's right. He's that's a right. he's he's a cutie and a half. So yeah, I just knew a, a couple of times people might have heard him, and I just wanted to make sure that uh, that we gave him props. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for the credit. <laughs> cool. All right. Thanks a ton. So this Thank will you. be posted in about a week. Um, it takes me it takes. I've got somebody working on editing. It takes a, a little bit of time to get. Um, the editing completed when it's uploaded this this um, this interview in its entirety will be available at um, you'll you'll find a blog post with all the links at wiseeconomy.com um, you will find it on YouTube and you'll be able to access it at, in an audio version so without the screen sharing um, but an audio podcast via SoundCloud Stitcher and Spotify. So any of those platforms, you can find the uh, becoming a wise or building a wise local economy on the, on the Spotify and Stitcher platforms on um, on SoundCloud. Just search wise economy. Um, but all of that will be posted, and uh, Jaime, that'll all be available for you to share far and wide and wherever you wish to. So, thank well, thank you. This has been fabulous. Been very it has. I, I really have appreciate it. You too. You take care. Everybody. Yeah. Have a good weekend. See ya. Bye. Three hours the time to speak the truth frankly and boldly. Nor need we shrink from honestly facing conditions in our country today. This great nation will endure as it has endured, will revive and will prosper. So first of all, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror, which parallels